If there really are islands meriting the description of paradise on Earth, they must be the Fiji Islands. And Suva, the capital, welcomes the tourists who come in growing numbers in search of peaceful relaxation away from it all. Now the city was completing its preparations for the visit of Her Majesty and the Duke of Edinburgh. And not only Suva itself, but the outlying villages were thinking of nothing else. In Tamavua, the chieftain's wife completed her hairdo. No perm required. The village was soon deserted, as the people made their way to Suva to welcome their queen. The royal arrival had been delayed by bad flying conditions for nearly 24 hours, which gave added zest to the loyal welcome. News of the approaching arrival was broadcast to all the villagers by the centuries-old Fijian drum, the Lali. Britannia brought the Queen to Suva from the town of Lautoka, where she and the Duke went aboard the previous evening. Some little citizens determined to get the nearest possible view. The royal occasion was ceremoniously observed when the battery of Fiji military forces fired a salute of 21 guns. The governor, Sir Kenneth Maddox and Lady Maddox, were there to receive the Queen and Prince Philip. With no sign of nervousness, six-year-old Andy Cohen Lotuma presented a bouquet. She is the great-great-granddaughter of the chief who ceded to Queen Victoria the sovereignty of the Fiji Islands. Little Andy has her full share of the natural dignity of the Fijian people completely at her ease as she retreated backwards in a way any courtier of olden times might have envied. Her Majesty proceeded to inspect the Guard of Honor mounted by the Fiji military forces. formalities were completed, the Queen and Duke left King's Wharf and drove through the city on the way to Albert Park. Awaiting them there, patiently despite the great heat, were 14,000 children. For in Suva, as always on her tours, the Queen likes to see and be seen by the new generation of her subjects. Diversion here provided by the warriors of Korolevu village performing their traditional spear dance. beautiful setting for the special Fijian ceremonies of welcome was Government House. Here the Queen was about 11,000 miles from the frozen scene of London Airport, from which she flew barely three days before. Like all the peoples of the Pacific Islands, the Fijians attached great importance to the observance of the traditional forms of welcome. Today, they were greeting the most honored of all visitors, the Queen and her husband. First, the Angawanga. It goes back to the time when all who wished to land came by canoe, and Fijian women used to wade out and lay a tambua, a whale's tooth, on the bow. Another tambua is presented by men in the reception party. <laughs> Now the presentation of mats, woven in the many styles traditional to various parts of the islands. The final proof that the visitors are indeed welcome is provided by the ceremony of Cebu Cebu. That is the presentation of a carver route. It needed 20 strong men to carry it. From this route is prepared the drink known as kava, a brew reputed to make strong men turn pale till they get used to it. The mixture of root and water is strained through hibiscus fiber and can then be drunk. One little onlooker had to be chased away. 
The kava was now ready to be served in a coconut shell. This might be a trying moment for any visitor, but as this was not Her Majesty's first visit to the Fiji Islands, she knew what to expect. Kava has been described as looking like muddy water and tasting like it. That is to the beginner. The Queen had no qualms. It was now the turn of the Duke. man nothing at all. All too soon for everyone in Suva, it was time for the Queen and her husband to leave. Very pleasant must have been the memories of that brief visit. The Silver Choir sang the Fiji farewell song, Isale. Sir Kenneth Maddox and his wife waved goodbye. Although the program at Fiji was delayed by nearly 24 hours, it was completely carried out to the great joy of all. For the people Her Majesty was now leaving are second to none in their loyalty to the crown. As Britannia sailed to New Zealand, the Fijians resumed their tranquil existence. How inviting those islands seemed to be.